you don't make a lot of money. Not like Wells Fargo and you know some of these guys who make lots and lots of money. Um, but all in all, just to, to sum up what I think made a difference uh, for me in, in my career was uh, learning how to treat people with dignity and respect and then applying that. Once you can do that uh, with your coworkers, with your peers, and encourage them to do the same with you, you then not only have encouraged it, but you also want them to then embrace it, not just to understand it, but then to adapt their, their lives to that. And I made a lot of friends, friends that did not understand the Latin culture. People that would look at, at me at Continental and say, you know, you made a difference. And I think that's one of the reasons the numbers are what they are. And that was the other thing that helped me. By doing this, I also was taking a big, big risk, but I knew it would pay off. And the risk is that if I change the service, if I improve the service for the Latinos, for the Hispanic market, that the customers would come that they would prefer my company over flying on somebody else's. Well, throughout the media, particularly the Hispanic media in the United States, we became known as the, the friendly, the Hispanic friendly airline. That's what they would call, that's the way we would refer to Continental because we were involved in Hispanic events. We had uh, Spanish salespeople to call on the Spanish travel agencies. We spoke Spanish on board. The food was to their liking. It's like, okay, these guys get it. They know what we want, and they, they showed it with their wallet. They, they came and bought more tickets on We always enjoyed a, a nice market share premium. I think a lot of it had to do with the type of service that we were offering. So it, once the, the dollars made sense, everything fell, everybody fell in line. Then I didn't have to go convince anybody else of the importance of it. And I've seen other, I was in New York at a conference just a, a month ago, and I listened to uh, one of the senior VPs from AT&T talking how they're now Latinizing. They're putting some of their stores in the barrios, but the difference is that they're putting Spanish speakers and they have Spanish signage. And what they have found is that Hispanics text something like 25% more than the Anglo market. <laughs> Why? why? How does it? I don't know why, but they do. Uh, it's a cultural thing. They've got to be a lot of communication. So these things matter. They make money and dollar sense. That's why the communities, the corporate communities, need to learn to respect as well as embrace. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. No, 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 no. Gracias. Gracias, gracias, gracias. I thank just you. wanted to add something about Continental. Since I'm a travel consultant, mm -hmm. you also are travel agent friendly. It's mm -hmm. the only you know, company that we can deal and uh, fix things. That's why I hired Latin salespeople <laughs> to handle the travel agents. Exactly. He would prefer flying Continental than Taka Airlines. He told me that they treat us better, this, this, and that. I went, really? I, I didn't know. One of the things that the Salvadorians did is um, during an earthquake that 10 years ago, I was able to get uh, Gordon, my boss at the time, uh, to allow me to take 10 airplanes worth of goods and got a lot of press. And people were impressed that here, an American company like Continental, was flying in medical relief, water, and all the things that these you know, people needed, and yet their own carrier, Taka, was not. The, the, the consulate general here from El Salvador you know, actually publicly says it quite often. He says, you guys were the only ones to help. But it makes a difference when you become part of the community. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. I don't, Joe, I didn't open it up for question and answer, but I'm, a, I'm available if you, if you have time and you want to ask any questions uh, about... Uh, don't ask me about pricing.
I don't set the airline pricing. Uh, and I retired a year ago, so, uh, but I'm now a consultant for, uh, for Continental and Idaho Mexico. But please, go ahead. Yeah, you, you have to be very careful uh, when you're dealing with, I mean, just some little things. And, and sometimes, I used to have to uh, appro visually approve everyone. And I remember one uh, ad that uh, I had not approved. And they were talking about um, customers going hands on and doing their own reservation because we were pushing uh, online bookings. Travel agents don't like to hear that a lot. But uh, they were pushing for online booking. And I helped create the Spanish version and, and so forth. But the ad was uh, mete la mano. Uh, and and, and it, it, you know, it, it didn't sound right. <laughs> it didn't sound right because there's a couple of ways you can say that, you know. Uh, meter la mano bolsillo or, you know, it, it has many meanings. So the semantics uh, are very important that people understand them. And this was a Hispanic agency that it came up, had come up with this, but it was, uh, I think the, the person was from, I think they were from Chile, and they didn't quite get the, the, the jest that other countries got from that statement. So, uh, yeah, semantics are very, very important. Double meanings, triple meanings. Uh, you have to know that you have, you just avoid them. I said, they said, well, how do we say that? I said, just don't say it. It, just don't say it. Find another way to say go online, you know. Right, well, where can you first so many things, right? And it's possible we have a actually final time presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Anybody else? He'll be here after the meeting. Yeah. So again, thank you. Thank you again. Thank I appreciate you it. Thank you. Thank you.